What's going on, everybody? I am back to break down this five-game MLB DFS slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. Excited to get into it. Going to get you the top plays to get you winning some money tonight, as always, guys. If you enjoyed the content, would be greatly appreciated if you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload. And don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the video for my home run call of the day, fan favorite segment on the channel, guy that I'm picking to go deep tonight. And if you are getting very serious about MLB DFS, I would highly recommend my MLB DFS premium packages. You can check them out. Link down below in the description. Patreon.com slash KJK underscore DFS. I do offer a prize picks MLB package, a DraftKings FanDuel MLB package. And if you do play DraftKings FanDuel and prize picks, you can go ahead and get the combo package and you get access to both at a discount. So uh, without further ado, guys, let's get into it. We're going to go game, or I'm sorry, we're going to talk about pitchers first, and then we're going to get into batters on the latter half of the video. And as always, I like to go ahead and sort my sheet by K rate. It's fantasy sports. We get points for strikeouts. Figure out the top pitches that we want to target on the slate and then go from there. And the top guy is going to be Max Scherzer returning to Washington tonight against to force to face his former team. Comes in with a 33.2% K rate overall, a 15.5 swinging strike rate, 37% K rate to righties, and a 29.5% K rate to lefties. So absolutely dominant across the board. We know that, but he is in particularly really dominant against right handed hitting. When you're looking at the Washington Nationals lineup up and down, you can see a lot of lefties at the top of the order, but then once we get down to the bottom, righty, 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 right down towards the bottom. So that's obviously going to uh, treat Max Scherzer very well with his 37% K rate to righties. We did see on opening day, we talked about it, there's going to be some pitchers that are limited. We're going to see probably like 70, 80 pitches or so for all these starters uh, out of the gate, and then they're going to slowly increase their pitch count up. So keep that in mind. Uh, when you're picking your pitchers tonight. But the fact of the matter is, I think Scherzer is clearing away the top guy on this slate tonight. He comes in at 10-2 on DraftKings over here on FanDuel. He's 11K. Uh, you're going to have to pay up a little bit for him. And like I said, with the pitch counts being limited, you can always make an argument to maybe pay down early in the season. So if that's your case, I don't hate it. It's really going to come down to your stacks that you're wanting to roll out. Are they expensive enough to have to drop down to another guy? And are there enough quality options uh, to drop down to, which we're going to talk about as we go along here. But Scherzer, without a doubt, top option on the slate. Uh, phenomenal play tonight. And uh, I gets a pretty great matchup taking on this Washington National squad as well that I'm not too worried about looking at their lineup up and down. They do have quite a few guys with, you know, right around a 20% plus K rate. Uh, that's going to treat Scherzer pretty well. So uh, Charlie Morton second on the slate. He's taking on the Cincinnati Reds. He comes in with a 27.9% K rate overall. Good ground ball, fly ball stuff, good hard contact stuff. Clearly the top pitcher on the slate uh, across the board as far as that stuff's concerned. The 24.4% K rate to righties and a 31.9% K rate to lefties. Actually, the opposite of Scherzer, the guy we just talked about, actually is more effective against left-handed hitting, ironically. And he can rack up the Ks against those lefties. And we're looking at the lineup that he's going to face today against the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, up and down, you can see, you know, a pretty well mixed blend of uh, lefties and righties overall. But also the Vegas Lions, they do have him as a 190 favorite. That's something I forgot to talk about with Max Scherzer as well. He's a 182 favorite, so obviously, you know, going as deep into the game and getting the win is ideal for our fantasy lineups. Scherzer a 182 favorite, uh, Charlie Moore a 190 favorite. They are the two heaviest favorites on the slate, so that's automatically going to make them pop uh, in your projections. Just as far as, you know, being able to go the distance, get some strikeouts, and get that win. I do like these two guys' odds of doing it the best. And Charlie Morton is pitching in a uh, pretty good pitcher's ballpark for the most part in Atlanta. You can see the Atlanta Braves Stadium, Truist Park. Plays pretty neutral uh, in the outfield, but it's not exactly the best hitting environment either. So uh, never a complaint, of course, anytime we can get a pitcher in a, a good pitcher's ballpark. Uh, there's definitely some better pitcher's ballparks out there, but Atlanta, not a bad one. Um, so we can deal with that in a 190 favorite and good stuff across the board once again And then you get a little bit of a discount off him as comparison to Scherzer You know, you can go down to him at 8-4 on DraftKings over on FanDuel. He's down to 9k uh, So once again, if you need the more expensive stacks, we're going to talk about the stacks uh, on the second half of the video or the, the bats uh, Charlie Morton could be a good option for you Third on the list, we have Jose Barrios taking on the Texas Rangers 25.9% K rate overall 24.6% K rate to righties and a 27.2% K rate to lefties is very, very good across the board as far as hard contacts, lugging all that stuff against righties, but he does have his fair share of issues against lefties, although the K rate does climb up. And the uh, Texas Rangers have a much different looking lineup this year. Uh, they've made some major improvements now with Marcus Semien and Corey Seager ad adding to the mix. They still only do have a 3.86 implied run total, though, which I do think kind of speaks volumes to what Vegas is expecting here. Uh, I don't think they're expecting Barrios to have much of an issue uh, going through this lineup, which is kind of crazy. There's definitely some high K-rate guys throughout the middle of the order when you're looking at the Texas Rangers lineup. Mitch Garver, Nate Lowe, Lowe 
Uh, Adolos Garcia specifically, these three guys really do strike out at high rates, 35, 24, and 29% K rate in the heart of that order. So certainly uh, some strikeouts to be had in the middle order. The top and the bottom, though, there are some pretty low K guys, so a nice well-balanced lineup. But I do like the fact that he's a 179 favorite. We know the Toronto Blue Jays offense is certainly going to supply him with some run support uh, every given night. They have a very good lineup, and uh, he's once again another guy you can be pivoting to in your tournament lineups, and uh, Vegas does like him. Quite a bit here. 3.86 implied run total for the Rangers, 3.58 for the Reds, and a 3.85 for the Nationals. So all these guys kind of hovering right around the same implied run total. Obviously, the bullpens and stuff is factored into that run total as well. But uh, just to give you kind of an idea of what Vegas is expecting here. When you're looking at the price tags, Barrios is 8.9 over there on DraftKings. You get a nice discount to Charlie Morton if you want to go there. And uh, same can be said on FanDuel. So if you're having to decide between the two... Um, I mean, that's kind of a close call. That'll be up to you. I tend to think I lean towards Charlie Morton, though. Uh, just based on the matchup, the, the K upside, the sharpness, uh, especially if there's going to be limited pitch count. I just think Charlie Morton might be able to get you more strikeouts with a uh, limited amount of pitches in comparison to Jose Barrios. So uh, Josiah Gray taking on the New York Mets is really a guy that I'm not too interested in. He has a walk issue. He has a uh, hard contact issue. He's really not that great across the board. And the fact that he has... Um, a decent K rate is really the only thing that's making him stand out up here against the New York Mets, but I think that's a little bit scary to be targeting. Shamanaya against Arizona, uh, it's certainly a guy you could be going to. He does have a 22.8% K rate to righties, a 30% K rate to lefties. He is more dominant against lefties. Uh, looking at his matchup in Arizona, they do have a 4.12 implied run total. It is in Arizona, which is a pretty decent uh, hitter's ballpark. Um, and the Diamondbacks really don't strike out much to lefties is my only concern here, but I think you could probably go deep into the game. There's not a lot of really friendly strikeout matchups on this slate outside of the Angels, I would say. Um, so, and the Angels still have a pretty hefty implied team total against Jacob Rizzi. So, uh, Sean and I, I don't hate if you want to go to him. Uh, it's just like, do we really want to pay 8-8 for Sean and I when we can go up to Charlie Morton, when we can go to Jose Barrios? I'm not quite sure he's on their level yet. Uh, for me and my book and the pricing uh, over here on DraftKings, FanDuel, is favoring Shamanaya as far as like his price tag being up a little bit more. Um, I tend to think I'm gonna have to dig into the numbers. Of course, this is kind of a first look video as I go throughout the day in my you know my final core plays, my cheat sheet, my top stacks for you premium content members. I'll have this dialed in, but I tend to think he's gonna follow fall behind those other guys that we just discussed. Uh, and then the rest of the way, I don't think these guys are guys I'm really be too interested in. Uh, Sam Martin, we have a really limited sample size on him, but he gets to take on an Atlanta Braves matchup that's just not fun to be facing. They have a 4.92 implied team total. That's going to be a no for me. I think that's getting a little bit too cute. Uh, if I had to pick one more guy, it probably would be Jake Odorizzi, and that's simply because the LA, LA Angels do have a pretty hefty uh, K K lineup through the heart of the order with guys like Adele, Marsh, and uh, Stassi striking out a lot. But the Angels do have a 4.75 implied team total. And um, Jacob Arizzi has less than impressive numbers. So for me, I really think going down and digging into these cheaper guys is a little bit dicey for to me tonight. Maybe a Merrill Kelly, but the Padres have a 4.88 implied total. So once again, I kind of think we kind of already covered the pitchers that we're looking to go to tonight. Switching on over to bats, as always, I like to go ahead and sort my sheet by skill and active ERA. Sierra, worst to best. It's a good way of determining how good a pitcher's been so far uh, over the last couple of years and how good he's expected to be in the future. I have the last two years dialed into this data. Uh, Reed Detmers is the worst on the slate. He was terrible last year. We do have a small sample size, granted, only a 15 innings pitch sample size. Um, but the fact of the matter remains, he gets to take on a Houston Astros lineup tonight. That's one of the most difficult matchups in the league. He really didn't have a high strikeout rate. He gave up a 515 slugging to righties, a 591 slugging to lefties. So of the small sample size that we have so far out of him, it's uh, it's not good. And the Astros do have a 4.75 implied run total, and they do get to play in LA, which early in the year has 85 degree temps as in comparison to playing in you know Washington, where it's 59 degrees, Atlanta, where it's 52 degrees, um, Arizona. There's a dome. Toronto, there's a dome, so those two you can kind of have neutral factors. But 85 degrees with eight minor on ones blowing out is great weather at this time of the year. And uh, the Astros certainly going to be intriguing targets tonight. They have some lefty, uh, some right bats that really do hit left-handed pitching well. Guys like Jose Altuve, Diaz, Alex Bregman, Yuliski Gariel, uh, Jeremy Pena, Chaz McCormick is a guy that has a lot of power at the bottom of this lineup in the eighth spot. That might go overlooked. I think Martin Maldonado is a great catcher to be targeting against lefties. 
Uh, DraftKings, you have to play catcher fan, you don't. So maybe getting a little contrarian with playing a catcher in your stacks isn't always a bad idea. So I do like the Houston Astros bats for sure. And then you can play the lefties. Uh, even though it's lefty on lefty, if they're able to get Detmers out of the game early, get to the bullpen, maybe you get like a Tucker and a Jordan Alvarez low owned. Uh, very, very talented hitters in a great game environment. And they are on the road in LA, which means they get guaranteed at bats in the top of the ninth inning. And when you're looking at the LA Angels uh, hitting environment, uh, it's pretty neutral, but I will say I do think that Angel Stadium isn't as bad for home runs as some people think. I talk about this a lot in my content, but like I think a lot of people think it's like one of the worst stadiums for home runs, and that's just like not the case. It plays pretty neutral, uh, and it's actually pretty friendly down that right field line to uh, left-handed batters, as you can see with the data here. So um, I, I certainly don't mind targeting Angel Stadium, and especially this time in the year where the weather is this much of an extreme difference. Uh, Going to be a fantastic spot for the Astros tonight. Uh, Josiah Gray taking on the New York Mets. We talked about him. He has a hard contact issue. He does have some strikeout upside with a high swinging strike rate of 14.3% and a K rate of 248 so you could take some shots on him in your tournament lineups tonight uh, from a pitching aspect. It's going to be high risk, high reward for sure. But uh, the New York Mets really don't strike out that much either looking at their lineup up and down. So for me, it's a little bit scary. But it does give up a 524 slugging to righties, a 484 slugging to lefties. Uh, really, really bad against both hand and of pitchers. I mean, the ground ball fly ball stuff's not good. The hard contact stuff's good. The uh, slugging is not good, man. So I think targeting some Josiah Gray is not a bad idea. The only downside is that it is bad weather it's only 59 degrees this game is expected to play though from the weather report i saw so far it does look a little bit dicey as far as like being wet in that you know less than ideal hitting conditions but it's in washington it is a big ballpark upgrade for the new york mets compared to their home stadium in uh, new york so nationals park does play pretty great especially down the left field line to those right-handed hitters but across the board i mean even to right it's a pretty phenomenal uh, hitting environment in nationals park so i like targeting it and uh, i do like targeting the mets tonight like as i said josiah gray Really not good outside of the strikeouts. So, but when you're looking at the New York Mets lineup up and down, as far as like the guys with high strikeout rates, not really anyone. Even Pete Alonso, it only comes in at like a 20% K rate. Uh, I'll see the I'll, I'll Escobar. Sorry, Escobar does have a 23.3% K rate, and James McCann does have a 29% K rate. But outside of that, they're all hovering right around 20% maximum, uh, which really isn't that bad. You have Brandon Nimmo at the top, starting Marte, Francisco Lindor, Pete Alonso, Robinson Cano is probably going to get in the the lineup. Eduardo Escobar. Uh, Jeff McNeil, Mark Cannon. I mean, this is a very good lineup. Um, and a lineup that really doesn't strike out that much. And a lineup that gets to take on a guy that gives him a lot of hard contact, a lot of fly balls. Uh, they get that ballpark upgrade. So I certainly think the New York Mets are interesting tonight. Jake Odorizzi taking on the LA Angels. Another guy really bad in the ground ball, fly ball, hard contact categories. Gives him a 467 slugging to righties, a 416 slugging to lefties. Um, so once again, a guy that I feel comfortable targeting. Uh, pretty bad against both sides of the plate, to be honest with you. Uh, he has a walk issue against lefties, against righties. He doesn't walk nearly as many, but he still gives us a lot of hard contact, still a lot of slugging. Uh, the Angels have a guy that's a pretty good hitter. You might have heard of him before, Shohei Otani, and another guy that you might have heard of before that's a pretty decent hitter as well, Mike Trout. <laughs> so uh, I think both those two guys certainly do look intriguing on this slate tonight. Low strikeout rate for uh, Odorizzi, a lot of hard contact in LA. You get that uh, warm weather out there in LA, so... Certainly does look appealing to be targeting a Otani, a Trout tonight, a Jared Walsh, an Anthony Rendon, Joe Adele, Brandon Marsh, two young studs. You're looking for one of them to break out. Like I said uh, earlier, if you want to target Jacob Odorizzi, these guys do have really high K rates from the last season. Like Joe Adele, Brandon Marsh, and Max Stassi all strike out at a 30 plus percent clip in the uh, the seven five and the five six and seven hole here. Uh, but Still, like I said, um, Odorizzi does give up a lot of hard contact. So you're going to want to be targeting the Angels as far as I'm concerned. You're stacking up the Angels or you're playing Jake Odorizzi. If you want to go the Odorizzi route, uh, I think it's a high-risk, high-reward option. So, uh, But I do think the Angels stack is pretty great. And like I said, they, the hitting weather just really stands out uh, in L.A. compared to all these other spots on the slate. So that is worth noting. John Gray taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. He's final, finally out of course field. I think John Gray is a really good pitcher. His numbers, I think, are somewhat... Um, you know, worse than they would be if he didn't pitch in course field previously. Now he's out of there. He's no longer on the Colorado Rockies. He is on the Texas Rangers, however, though, which they also have one of the best hitting in, uh, environments in baseball. But he is pitching in Toronto tonight. Um, so I guess you could say it's a little bit of a ballpark upgrade for him in comparison to the home field. Looking at the Blue Jays Stadium and Rogers Center does play pretty neutral for the most part, uh, but not quite as friendly as Texas, that's for sure. So 
Um, I guess a little bit of an upgrade. Still not the best uh, pitching environment, but he gets to take on a Toronto Blue Jays squad tonight. That's a really good lineup up and down. That's the problem. This is going to be really scary to be targeting. So I think we wait on John Gray. He's a low-owned guy that if you want to take some shots on the tournament, sure. But I mean, the Blue Jays, they're so good and they also just don't strike out. Their lineup's loaded up and down and they don't strike out. I mean, you got a guy, Teoscar Hernandez, who strikes out at 27% and uh, Matt Chapman, who strikes out at 34%. But other than that, I mean, this lineup is just solid up and down. They can hit for power. They can hit for contact. Uh, they're disciplined hitters. So for me, it's a little bit scary going to, you know, John Gray as far as uh, his pitching and then targeting him. When you're looking at his splits, he is much better against righties than lefties. So lefties is where I think we want to target him with the, the Blue Jays the most. The ground ball fly ball stuff is just really good against righties. Obviously, the Blue Jay hitters do have some elite right-handed hitters. in George Springer, Vladimir Guerrero, Teoscar Hernandez. Uh, and the problem is actually they really don't have any lefties. So I think this is a spot where maybe not getting too high on Blue Jays stack and not getting too high on Gray either. Um, kind of just a eh, spot for me uh, when it comes to targeting the Blue Jays. Uh, Merrill Kelly taking on the San Diego Padres. A lot of hard contact giving up with a 37.1% hard contact rate. That is the worst on the slate. He gives up a 43 slugging to righties and a 364 slugging to lefties. Actually is a little bit better against those lefties. Uh, overall, though, pretty neutral across the board. And Merrill Kelly is a guy that had a big year last year, but honestly, I'm just like not scared of targeting him. Anytime I see Merrill Kelly on the board, I feel comfortable stacking him, uh, stacking against him. And Trent Grisham, Manny Machado, Jake Cronenworth, Luke Voigt, Eric Hosmer, there's a lot of talent in this lineup. Will Myers, Austin Nola, Jerks, and Profar, uh, CJ Abrams at the bottom of the order. Pretty well rounded lineup, similar to like the New York Mets that we discussed earlier. Um, and they are on the road, similar to the New York Mets. So they get the guaranteed ninth inning at bat. They're in Arizona. That is a ballpark upgrade in comparison to their home confines for a ballpark. Arizona is pretty friendly uh, for a hitting environment. And it is in a dome uh, right now. It does play very friendly to left-handed hitters as well. I like targeting that right field line when it comes to Arizona. So targeting the lefties on, Ari on uh, the Diamondbacks so that makes sense. But I'm not scared to target Merrill Kelly personally. I'll always target him. So I like Manny Machado. I like uh, Eric Hosmer, Will Myers. Uh, no issues with going to those guys. And then the rest of the way, as far as guys we're really looking to, Jose Barrios has some splits issues uh, against Texas. So you're really looking to target him with the left-handed hitters. That's about it. He's right against righties. He's really, really good against lefties. He does give him a 457 slugging. Uh, hard contact stuff's not good. He does have a high strikeout rate against those lefties. So preferably low strikeout left-handed hitters you, you want to target uh, against uh, Barrios. But, uh, I mean, the power guys are, are just going to be viable. Brad Miller does strike out a lot, but he has a lot of power. So if you want to go to him, no issues. Corey Seager, a phenomenal hitter, obviously. Um, Nate Lowe going to be a great option on this slate tonight. Adolis Garcia from the right-hand side, maybe not as interesting, but then you have Cole Calhoun and Willie Calhoun at the bottom of the order. And maybe these guys get moved up in the, the order tonight just because they do the research and Barrios does have pretty bad splits against lefties. It's a possibility. And then obviously they become a uh, great place. And then from there, guys, I mean, Sean Maniah, you can tar always target him with right-handed power, uh, and San Martin. I mean, I, I'm glad actually we didn't skip over him. He, he has a limited sample size. But, uh, I mean, from what we can see so far, I, I we don't really have a sample size. But I can tell you one thing. He's taken on the Atlanta Braves. And when it comes to having a low sample size, I tend to lean on Vegas to tell me, you know, how good this guy's going to be and what kind of a spot he's in. It's in Atlanta. There's 16 mile an hour winds blowing out the left center. And the Atlanta Braves are a very good lineup. And they have some lefty masters. So, for me, uh, I'm definitely going to have some interest in the Atlanta Braves stack tonight and targeting the power. Uh, Orlando Garcia, Ozzy Albi smashes uh, left-handed pitching, love targeting him. Austin Riley, Marcelo Zuna, Adam Duvall, Dansby Swanson, Travis Darno hits lefties very well. You have already had to round things at the bottom of the order. Then you can go lefty on lefty with Matt Olson to get contrarian in your lineups if you'd like because that's automatically going to lower his ownership most likely uh, if you do want to go to a Matt Olson tonight. So um, that is all from me in this one as far as a breakdown, guys. Before I let you guys go, I do have to give you my home run call of the day. Let's get into it. And my home run call of the day today is going to be Jake Cronenworth taking on Merrill Kelly tonight. I had mentioned his splits across the board. Really not too scared of targeting him in a ballpark upgrade for the Padres tonight. Going into Chase Field, love targeting that short right field porch. And then when you break down what Merrill Kelly likes to go to against those left-handed hitters, mostly a fastball change of curveball guy and Cronenworth crushes all those pitches his fastball hovers between 90 to 92 mile an hour fastball jake cronenworth features a 545 iso with a 470 woba against that pitch 
when he breaks out the changeup, not an issue either. His prime worth features a 215 ISO with a 311 Woba. And lastly, the curveball Cronenworth crushes as well with a 370 ISO, 546 Woba. Love this spot for Jake Cronenworth. Get him in your lineup because he is my home run call of the day. So there you have it guys, Jake Cronenworth, get him in your lineup. So that is all from me in this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, would be greatly appreciated if you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload. If you haven't signed up for the premium content packages, would highly recommend you do so. That's linked below in the description, patreon.com slash kjk underscore DFS. Wishing you all the best of luck on this slate tonight, and we will see you in the next one.